welcome back to the CSENT journey with me, Ryan. In this next video, we're going to have a discussion around Packet Tracer, GNS3, and physical hardware. We'll start by discussing Packet Tracer, how you can obtain a copy, and what courses are available for you by Cisco to take free of charge. We'll then navigate over to GNS3, have a look how you would download it, and why it may be a different option to pursue than Packet Tracer. And then lastly, we'll have a very brief discussion around the physical hardware options. For those who don't know, you can contact me here on YouTube, on LinkedIn, or Twitter. Okay, so just a quick video regarding the Cisco Networking Academy, and within that, the packet tracer options. But before I jump into that, I just want to give you an overview of the Cisco Networking Academy. Now, Cisco has this academy that's open to everyone to sign up. Some of the courses you have to pay for, some of the courses are free, some are self-paced, and others are instructor-led. But this website gives you a view from a Cisco point of view, what certifications they think you need within the industry to uh, get yourself into a particular role, and give you some of the options available to learn some of the technologies. Keep in mind, this doesn't have all the qualifications available. There are things like the CompTIA and Microsoft and so forth that are not on this website. So only a handful of the qualifications and courses that Cisco offer are actually on this website. So things like the Networking Plus, for example, may be a good qualification to pursue, but it's not on this website. Okay, so first of all, if you go to courses, there are a bunch of courses that you can book, pay for, or attend free of charge through this particular website. And there are also some information around careers and how to get started. So I think the career pathway option is worth talking about. And again, this is from Cisco's point of view and it's not set in stone, but it kind of gives you a good feel of what qualifications and courses that Cisco expect you to actually go towards in order to achieve a particular job role. So for here, they're saying a technical support role. They would expect you to know about the IT essentials, some network essentials, and maybe a CCNA. Whereas if you wanted to become a network administrator, then maybe you need to have a CCNA, CCMP, an understanding of basic developer skills, and an overview of how Linux works. But this, again, is only Cisco's point of view, but it's a great website because it helps to put a lot of qualifications into sort of a point of view. Very briefly, something that's also worth mentioning is the CompTIA certification roadmap. This is arguably a better place to start because it's an organization that promotes open standards and it puts together different vendors and different perspectives in order to achieve a particular role within IT. So for example, information security, it says about the CompTIA IT fundamentals, the A+, and then moving on to a more intermediate level with the CCNA ethical hacking and then to more advanced with the CCMP and expert with the IE. So both the Cisco Networking Academy and the IT certification roadmap from CompTIA might give you some guidance on what to do for uh, a particular job role and I believe also Microsoft has one uh, that's very similar to these two. So go do some research, check out what path you want and maybe that'll give you some clarification on what qualifications to achieve. Okay, so let's go back. So why I've brought you here essentially is because if we scroll right down to the bottom, we actually have this option here for Packet Tracer. And if we click on Packet Tracer, it takes us to the free network simulation and visualization tool for the Internet of Things era. And with this particular course, you can sign up. So here you get the option to sign up. And this course in particular is free. It's only an hour long, but it gives you a few things. First of all, it's self-paced, so you can do it in your own time. But it gives you a free copy of Packet Tracer that you can download for your PC. And Packet Tracer is going to cover, I would say, 90 to 95% of all the topics that are on the CSENT and CCNA exams. And all you need to do is pop in your name and email address and the text verification. Not only does it give you a copy of Packet Tracer free, but it actually takes you through 
step-by-step um, -step videos on how to utilize Packet Tracer in order for you to get the most out of it. So something that's worth checking out is only an hour of your time. It gives you, you know, the equipment that you need to achieve your CSEN and CCNA free of charge, and it gets you actually on the command line doing some configurations. Now, when I done my qualification, I did use Packet Tracer, but I primarily used physical equipment because Packet Tracer and GNS3 and other options wasn't as matured as they are today. So it's worth checking out because it's obviously it's free and why not? So what I'm going to do is log in. And once you're logged on, you can see that I've enrolled in two courses. I've enrolled in the Packet Tracer and the NDG Linux Essentials. Both of these courses are free of charge. If you click launch course, it takes you into the course overview where you can launch the course itself or individual chapters and download your copy of Packet Tracer. If you hit launch course, obviously it tells you to download the actual Packet Tracer, which you obviously do. And then chapter one takes you through the user interface navigation. You'll watch 11 minute video. And then there's a, a glossary at the bottom of what the instructor is actually talking about. Your other option is to go to GNS3. GNS3 is a free emulation software as opposed to a simulation software that is Packet Tracer. And again, this is also free to download. You have to sign up initially, and then once you've signed up and logged in, it will give you the option to download. Once you've downloaded the software, what you need to do is actually obtain a Cisco iOS, which is a Cisco image and install that Cisco image inside GNS3. So GNS3 is also a great alternative to Packet Tracer, but from my opinion for the CSEN, CCNA, I think it'd be best and simpler to navigate down the Packet Tracer route because it's visually easier to work with and you don't have to worry about obtaining Cisco iOS images. GNS3 is an amazing product and it has its place but its place would be more towards the CCMP um, track rather than the CCNA and CSENT, especially with Packet Tracer being as it is today. However, that being said, if you still want to use GNS3, absolutely recommend it. Brilliant piece of software. I use it on a daily basis. So your last option, instead of going down the simulation or emulation route with Packet Tracer and GNS, you could actually go ahead and buy some physical hardware. Now, this isn't necessarily needed, but depending on what hardware you buy, you can actually set yourself up for the CCMP and CCIE. But of course, there's a very big price tag because when it comes to the new equipment to support the newer iOS, the more heavy the cost becomes. So buying physical equipment have a look at some of the pre-arranged labs that are already on the uh, on places like eBay or alternatively watch some videos like for example there's a great video by CBT Nuggets which I'll link in the description that goes through some of the recommendations of physical hardware that you should obtain in order to get your CSEN and CCNA but you can see that just by having a look at some of the options you can get an idea of what's needed and then either buy them as a set or buy them individually. So for example, some of the most common things that you're gonna see are the 2950 24 port switches, the 3550, the 3550 is a layer three, this is a layer two switch, and then you've got the different, what we call integrated services routers, which are the 2800 or the 1800 series, or some of the older 2600 series routers so all of which will be pretty good I mean the 2600 will run something like the 12.4 iOS whereas depending on which uh, 2800 or 1800 you get it may actually support up to the 15.x iOS the beauty you have at the moment with the CSEN and CCNA level is not a lot of the features uh, need the iOS 15 
So iOS 15 will be kind of the latest, if you like, to try to obtain for the CCNA and CCMP, but you can get away with the 12.4s and something called the 12.4T if you're planning to do the CCN and CCNA only. But of course, even if you were to buy older equipment, 90% of all the technologies are going to be available on them. Just make sure you don't go too old because some of the stuff won't be supported. So it's about doing some research, making sure you have the right equipment before you make that decision. Um, the other thing would be obviously understanding how much equipment that you need to purchase for your lab. Now, something that I would recommend would be something similar here, which is kind of three routers and two switches. But again, that could be very expensive. I know a lot of people use Packet Tracer for the majority of their actual labbing and just get one router that they can physically set up and see and maybe even use as part of that home internet connection. Because if you use it as your home connection, you have to learn how to connect it to your ISP, how NAT's gonna work, DHCP. So there are some really good features there that you can configure on just a single router. But obviously having a single router is gonna limit you on some of the capabilities that you need to do in order to get your CSENT and CCNA configuring things like RIP, for example. So there are a lot of options at hand. Whatever path you decide to do, obviously it's up to yourself. I would personally recommend maybe getting one or two physical routers just so you have something and then going down the packet tracer route. If you really want to invest, go all physical. Just do your research before you buy anything. If you have any questions, concerns around equipment, iOS images and so forth, pop in the comments below and hopefully I'll get around to answering them. So just to recap what we've gone over, we had a brief discussion around the certification overview, looking at the comp tiers uh, roadmap and also the Cisco uh, Networking Academy. And then we looked at Packet Tracer and the course that you have available to you that would show you how to use Packet Tracer. We said uh, GNS is an alternative to Packet Tracer, but this is what's called an emulation, whereas Packet Tracer is called a simulation. It's important to know the difference because Packet Tracer is only trying to simulate Cisco equipment, whereas GNS3 allows you to actually take a Cisco iOS and put it inside their software and emulate it as if it was a physical piece of equipment. Therefore, GNS3 has no uh, routing limitations, but due to the fact that you need iOS and the CSENT and CCNA test things like switching, this is where the GNS3 limitations start to appear. But again, brilliant bit of software. Highly recommend spending some time investigating what GNS3 can do for you because there are some packet capture offers that it does that can really help you understand what's happening on the wire. And lastly, we talked about physical hardware. We said that you can get things like the 2900 series routers or the 3550s and then the ISR ones which are things like the 2800 routers and the older 2600 routers. There are a lot of options when it comes to physical and there's not any sort of standard recommendation because it depends on what's available in your area and where you're buying the equipment from. But really what you should be aiming for is at least 12.4 or above. So that's 12.4T uh, or 15.X long as it's running one of these iOS's, which is essentially the Cisco software, then you should be good to go. But do your research, have a look at some of the pre-made labs, and if needed, pop a question in the comments below, and either myself or someone else in the YouTube community will, will reply to you. Alternatively, as I said, there's a great video from CBC Nuggets, which I'll link in the description, where Jeremy goes over some of the recommended equipment for a physical CSEN CCNA lab. I hope this video has been informative, and I'd like to thank you for viewing, and if it has been, please do like and subscribe.